Yep. Hey, everybody. Hey, darling. Hey, hey, welcome to all of you. And, and pardon me, uh, we had a guest in with us today, and she uh, is hanging out. And she got me so entrenched in conversation with her that uh, I literally didn't look at the time. So <laughs> I apologize. We're, we're running slightly behind because of it. But today, here's what we've got. And, and by the way, that's really our best place to look. Okay. Um, <laughs> today, I got a, a number of people. Our topic today, the power of why. So with where we're at in, in, in the time of year is business planning, thinking about where we're going. What do we want to do for uh, 2023? How am I going to do my business? Matter of fact, how much do I need to do? And all of that starts with the aspect of why. So I've, I've got a few people with us uh, today to join. I've, I've got Peggy with me here. Peggy, some of you may know. Uh, if you would share a little bit about yourself. I work in the commercial division with Coldwell Banker Commercial Premier. Work with many of the agents out there as they get commercial deals. And I help them. Simple, simple. And then I have Miss Lori Ware next to her. I work with Century 21 Sackmar. I've been here six or seven years. Absolutely love it. Fantastic. And along with that, let's see, is Stephanie, are you on and with us out there? I'm here. There she <laughs> is. Miss Stephanie Rosello, uh, you give yourself a little introduction. Well, I have been uh, a realtor for six years with Coldwell Banker the whole time. I started off very, very slowly, but have worked up, and now I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk more about how she's become busy. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, one individual that I wanted to talk with is Miss Jessica Jones. I know Jessica is with her whole group there in Belleville. Uh, but Jessica, maybe you can give a quick interview uh, or introduction yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jessica. I'm the cover of the Belleville office. I'm real estate. I've been with Coldwell Banker Professionals since 2017. Um, it was Chris and the leadership team who introduced me to the concept of dream boards as part of my business planning at that time, something that I've been doing consistently since and believe in a lot. So I'm excited to be talking with the group about it today. So, yeah. So here's what we're really wanting to do is what is it? Because here's, here's what we know. In the end, we have to talk to a whole lot of people. We've, we've got to get in front of people, human beings who could say, yes, that I want to buy real estate or I want to sell real estate, but we need to get in front of those individuals somehow. And it may be as simple as talking to a few people every day that we work. But here's what we know. Most of us resist talking to people. So what is it? that will make us do what we don't want to do when we're given the option of doing that. I think that's what makes sense, Peggy. So I actually have brought a book with me today. It's called Manifest Your Destiny. And one of the first quotes in the book goes like this. Within you is a divine capacity to manifest and attract all that you need or desire. That's pretty bold. Mm -hmm. So what makes us think we can't do that is really the why and stopping us. Yeah. It, it, otherwise, how can we manifest what we don't even think we're capable of? So Absolutely. a huge part of it is just simply our belief that we are capable of doing so much more and, and or even the aspect of a dream, because I think that's one of the things that we've really pushed to everybody is the sense of the dream. Mm -hmm. But if we're not dreaming, if we're not even, if we don't believe it's possible or we've been li living within our own means, we haven't dreamed as to what's possible. Nope. Any suggestions toward that? 
you know, I, I every day make a list, like a to-do list. I have, a, I have a little planner. I write in it every morning what I need to do. And I, at the end of the day, I can check off what I've done. And if I'm having a really bad day and I'm feeling like I'm a failure, I just write in what I did accomplish, even if it wasn't on my list. So it might be, you know, I, I clean the litter box <laughs> just, to, just to pat myself on the back because you it's can't. an accomplishment. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie, Jeff, um, anything to add to that basic thought? Well, Jess, I'll jump in here. So I really like uh, the having the list. Um, I know somebody who will write, who writes, take a shower on their list, even though they know that they're going to do that because they can cross something off. Um, and really, I like that book. I'm going to have to get, I, I think I'm going to have to order that book, but manifesting, because if you put it out there, I shared with somebody today what my goals are for next year just a, a lender somewhere called me and we we're having a conversation because i'm putting it out there what my goals are and what i want to happen so that it will happen and maybe that person i spoke to will help me make that happen we have to just put it out there and we have to i think dreaming is the biggest thing the the why why is it worth the sacrifice or why is it worth stepping out of their comfort zone and Darwin very much knows my comfort zone that I can step out of now um, <laughs> but it's a shift that needs to happen up here but have your way to be able to do that to be able to get to that point but I love a list I love being able to cross off a list helpful awesome so a simple task list Jeff anything for that well, I know we're going to be talking about dream boards today. And if I shift my laptop, this is my current dream board. And uh, maybe I'll go into more detail about that later. But that is a, a visual representation of what is motivating me to work as hard as I do. And I, I keep it literally right next to me, look at it every day. I'll show you something else real quick. So this is what I see from my desk. That sunset picture right there is a, a picture that I took from the the house that I vacation at. And I I look at that every single day while I'm working at my desk and remind myself that part of the reason I'm working hard now is to get there in July. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, you know, really we, we talk the power of why and that if we don't have the why, then given the option of doing what we want to do or doing what we need to do, We'll typically choose not to do it because we don't have a reason why. And, and in real estate, that's really difficult because if you think of the natural cycle of a real estate transaction, we're talking that it takes, well, your actions today is your income 90 to 180 days from now. If you're in the mode of not doing, not doing, not doing, or if uh, you will, the income producing activities, prospecting, business development. If we're skipping out on those basic essentials, it's going to take 90 to 180 days to figure out we don't have any income. So we have to accept that basic thing and then come up with What's really going to motivate me to do the things necessary? And, and we won't even talk about what that is outside of prospecting and talking to people, but we've brought up the aspect of dream sheets. Just starting with the aspect of a dream. Um, you guys jump in. What uh, dream sheets? Have we done them? How do they work? I think it's important to remember that thoughts are things. So when you go over that dream sheet and you just let your thoughts be open, don't let them, mm, I want to say, allow yourself to be successful. Mm -hmm. Don't put things down like, oh, I would really like this. Because if you don't believe it, those thoughts are things and chances of achieving them are slim to none. So remember, thoughts are things. You're worthy of manifesting. So go for it. Take the Nike approach. I I say I've always said that everything starts with the dream. Begin with the end in mind, because it's it's 
matter of fact, I'll, I'll cover this in a, in a bit, but it, I'm going to simply say it's not the money. Mm -hmm. Not the money. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, Stephanie? I see you're off mute there. Was there something that you wanted to throw in towards the dream sheet? You know, I think having a visual is huge. So create the dream, whatever the dream is. And my dream changes throughout the year. So what started out in January might be different now, what I want to accomplish, just because life happens to us. Things come up, things go away. Um, but it feels so good. And Paula Romalis will tell you this. It feels so good to have your dream board and to realize that thing on your dream board, to, to have it up there, and then you accomplish that goal. It is the, oh, it is such a great feeling and it's great motivation to say, hey, I can do this. And then the next one you create, you know, you keep moving towards it. So then there, there's really two things that we need to talk about. One are, are the dream sheets. It's just um, two sheets. Your manager has them. If you've uh, joined us on the thumb drive in the past year, if you joined us past year on the thumb drive are the dream sheets. They're one to 50 and then 51 to 100. And all it's there for is to help you with a simple dream. It could be simple. It could be complicated. Um, you know, as you begin to dream, dream without the thought of money. I can't because, or as, you know, some of you, you've heard me talk about the drunk monkey on your shoulder that's really whispering in the ear that when you come up with a dream and it says, well, you, you can't do that. Hmm. I mean, how, how could you possibly? I mean, here, for me, it was, you're a small town guy from Hesperia. Good golly, all you got is a high school education. Our mind, that drunk monkey on the shoulder will start to talk to you and talk you out of the dream. So when it happens, write it down. Just write it down. Don't think about how. Don't think about why you can't. Don't think about why you should, but if you came up with it, write it down. And that's the power of the dream sheets. And by the way, if you can't come up with a hundred, don't worry about it, but dream and dream wildly. Okay. That's a goal. Um, but let's, let's then talk about, you know, the, the aspect of the dream board. Why, why the dream board? Uh, you know, anybody jump in there. Matter of fact, Jess, you already showed us yours. Why don't we go to you and, and just share how and why and maybe what it's done with some of the things that you've had experience because of it. Um, I will, if, if it's okay with the group, I'm, I'm kind of prepared myself to go all in and just kind of lay it out there and share with you my why, what that looks like, what it means to me, and then how I represent that with the dream board. So I'll try to keep this short as possible. Um, a lot of you know that I'm a parent, right? So I've got three beautiful boys who mean the world to me. And I work hard to provide for my family. That's, that's an overall goal. And I think that's a goal that that's easy for most parents to say. I work hard to provide for my family. And a lot of people would say, that's my why, which is perfectly valid. Um, however, I think that the true power of why is digging deeper than that, right? And going on yourself, your background, your situation, your individual story, focusing in on specifics, why it's important to you to provide for your family and what specifically that means to you in your situation. And, and that's my why. So my personal story and kind of the beginning process of, of setting goals and having dreams is reflecting, like I said, taking a deep dive into your motivation and coming up with specific goals. My personal story, like I said, a lot of you know I'm a parent. What a lot of you might not know is that um, I was a very young parent, which was formative to me and kind of my work ethic and the way I go about managing my life. Um, at one time in my life, I was a very young single parent and struggled uh, for, for years. That was a very, very challenging time in my life. And if I pull out one moment from that time, that 
mm-hmm. and something that I look back and reflect on now. It was um, a moment where I was 23 years old. I had picked my three-year-old son up from daycare and was driving home and came to the realization that I had a quarter tank of gas and $8 in my bank account and had to make it to that Friday when I got paid next. And I realized that everything that I was doing wasn't working. I was working full-time, a professional job with a bachelor's degree and wasn't making enough money to support myself and my child independently. That was a pivotal moment in my life. People call that a make or break moment. For me, driving in that car, looking in the rear view mirror and seeing my three-year-old looking back at me, I knew right then and there that to break was not an option. We were gonna make it moving forward that set the tone for the rest of my life, honestly. When I think about what really motivates me, I go back to that moment because I promised myself then and there that I would never experience that moment again. I'm gonna contradict you a little bit, Darwin, when you talk about this is not the money. This is all about the money for me. This is all about the money. But it's not about having dollars in the bank. It's what that money means. It's what I do with money. That's that's my why. I promised myself that I would do better. I would never experience that moment again. And that's what motivates me to work hard to be financially secure. Hey, Jess, can I jump in right there? Because I, I think you just made my point. Mm-hmm. It's if, if I went through a normal exercise with everybody, we would simply ask you, okay, you made all that money, but you can't spend it. How hard are you going to work the next 12 months that -hmm. you can't spend that either? You see, it's really not the money, but it's what you're saying, and and I always put it, it's what I'm going to do with it when I get it. That becomes the motivation, and therein lies the dream. And and, and so, yeah, you, you landed it. We're on the same page. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you a a specific specific example too, because I think the first part of the process, like I see it, is digging deep into really looking at what motivates you and why. That's your why. But then what do you do with that? You set goals, but it's helpful to me to set very specific goals. And one of my very specific goals for a long time, that, that was a sad story, but just so you know, that story had a very happy ending. We're doing very well right now. I was determined from that day to do whatever it was I needed to do to never experience that moment again. One of the things that I did during that time in my life was uh, put myself through graduate school. I graduated from a very prestigious university with a very expensive master's degree. Right? Tens of thousands of dollars in student loans. Uh, One of my goals, once I was financially secure and successful in selling real estate, one of my specific goals was to make sure that my then three-year-old, my my oldest son, could graduate from college debt-free without having that burden when he started his adult life. That was my very specific goal, and I'll show you on my dream board. So this is my current dream board, which is a work in progress. But this is the dream board that I worked with for several years leading up to now. And if you could see a picture of my son holding a degree right there with his graduation cap on. I looked at that every day for the four years that he was in college. I was able to pay his tuition 100%. And this past May, he graduated with a bachelor's degree debt free. And that that moment for me, all the success that I've experienced, you know, the the accolades, the recognition, the awards, that moment of having that that dream that I, I looked at and thought about every day when it happened was the best feeling I've ever had in my life. So I, that I, to me that's, is that's goosebumps all the way around is what that you. is. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So a very concrete example of a very specific goal that I set and accomplished, and it's been on my dream board for years. And now that that's done, now I can move on to the next sort of goal and stage in my life, and I'm working on the next dream board. That's a great share. 
and now the rest of us got to follow that. <laughs> Lori's uh, thinking. But yeah, it's like, oh, how do I, you know what? I There's life's moments, and I, I will add, and then you guys can think about what uh, or who might want to share next for this. But Anthony Robbins, I learned from that when it comes to the aspect of motivation, what motivates us, we either move toward pleasure or away from pain. And most of us, believe it or not, are not motivated by moving toward the pleasure, but we're motivated by moving away from the pain. And so a, a little bit, Jess, of what I heard with your story is, I don't ever want to go back to that. I don't want to have that feeling. I don't want to look at my kid and know that I couldn't take care of them. And I can think of the same thing. Um, I, there was not a specific moment, but let me just tell you, I, I don't want to go back to the way that uh, my wife and I had to live for a few years. Um, so yeah, move away from the pain. Sometimes we have to create that. And by the way, when we talk dream, dream, dream boards, some of us need to think of, well, if I don't reach this, how will it make me feel? What will it do if I don't get this? So um, who wants to share next? Lori. I think I'd just like to add that you know, on my dream board, it's not about, it's not entirely about my income or how many sales I'm going to make. It's, I, I want to have a balanced life. I want to um, give back to the community. I want to take care of myself. So some of my goals are being a better friend, being a better parent, um, eating healthier, exercising more, um, volunteering. And it's not to me, it's not all about how much you're going to, how much you're going to make. Exactly. That's, that's the little, the little bit. And then if you can have a balanced life, everything else kind of falls into place. Well, you actually have your dream board, right? You have yes. one again? Yes. Would you That's, mind? So we're right going to have her share. Uh, because again, I, I think a key that I might address is the aspect of dream it, see it, and Peg, this is what you said, believe it. I, I have to believe that it's possible, but it starts with the dream. And then being able to pencil it down really makes a difference. But when I can bring in uh, the five senses, that can make a huge difference. So you're going to have to turn it toward where you go. See that? So I don't know if you can see this, but a lot mm -hmm. of the items on it, are just, you know, health, um, being a, you know, having a balanced life. There's, you know, I've got a little Sackmar dollar on there just to kind of represent my goals as being a successful agent. But a lot of it is just personal goals. It wasn't really anything to do with my real estate goals. But then money just flowed. Because exactly. you manifested it. Right. If, if I'm focusing on money entirely, I'm not going to be a happy person. And then I'm not going to be a successful agent. And I think my clients can see that I'm not um, desperate for business. And they're more willing to work with me because they know I am kind of a, I got it together. Yeah, right? I would, absolutely. I would say, let's not even look at the money mm -hmm. when you get down to it. Once you have your, your goals, your dreams, your why, don't worry about the money. Matter of fact, I believe that when you forget about the money, the money will come. Right. Whether or not we could ever agree to this or not, but I think people will know when you're really truly concerned about them mm -hmm. versus what's going into your pocket by working with them. And you can do so many more things and you become so much more believable because it is about them and the opportunity that you've been given to work and represent them. So I, I love that. I think that's a great part. And, and if we share yours. Uh, so my dream board for this year, I actually felt guilty recently. Because my dream board was all about me. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And it still happened. I hate to do it because you're in that mode, but share. It's about priorities. Where do you spend your time? 
and that makes an adjustment. By the way, for those who don't know, <laughs> this is the grandmother of my granddaughter and grandson. So my my son is married to Peg's middle daughter. And so we've got a, a basically a two and a half and a one year old, I think, yeah. about right. Yeah, Seamus is almost born. Yeah. yeah, and and I love I got a Seamus, the truly Irish Seamus. Yeah, family. Rob, Rob got that name. He did get that he name. Did. So uh, I smile when I see this kid, and, and we'll see if he's moved. But yeah. that's a, a part of what I think we need to take a look at now. You and it's go different. priority. What? Um, and it's because it's a season of life. You have to recognize where you're at and you have to recognize your why of where you're at because there are times that you lose your why now jessica you might end up with three boys graduated debt free all of that and then what's your why right a, what? a lot of people transition and they have a hard time transitioning but when you constantly focus not necessarily on the money right that's a great side effect but when you focus on what truly life is about, you attract the right things. Mm -hmm. and, I, you, and you find time, like we're only given so many hours in a day, but it amazes me how many things positively happen that I don't make happen. They just happen. And I just say, okay, thank you. I, uh, you know, I'll throw out, I, I don't think I've ever hidden it. I'm a believer. <laughs> um, and uh, the way he instructs us to be able to live our life is he's first, our family is second, and our career is third. And so when you said it's the priority, um, have I built all of that in, in that order? Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to have like the life that you're talking about, have I put those priorities in that order or have I made the dollar, the, the holiness and therefore everything else is suffering? So I, I love the aspect of that prioritize and in, in the balance that we should be looking for. And you have to believe you're worthy. If you don't believe you're worthy or I'll use a term, co-creating your life, you're not going to get it. It's, it's pretty simple when you co-create with the right people. Well, as a matter of fact, he says, ask and then give thanks as if it's already been received, as, as if it's already been given. Uh, so why not? Why not? So I brought another item because it gets discouraging in real estate, right? Like, man, I haven't had a commission check in so long. And these residential agents, man, they get the listing, they sell it, they right? Commercial takes a year, year and a half, um, eventually. So you get these dry spells and you feel it. Remember, thoughts are things. So I have this book and it's my thankful and grateful journal every day. And I'm thankful for things I haven't even seen yet. That's a part of it. It is. Uh, I, I love our company and I love our people. Um, <laughs> And Steph, I, I mean, the journey that you've been on, I mean, we can talk about your current dream board, but yours is just a journey to, I almost call a hunt 180 because so yeah. many different areas of life has changed for you. Yeah, that is true. And, uh, you know, I... I didn't want to, I wouldn't consider myself shy, but I would not put myself on a video. Like I did not want to do any uncomfortable things to be in, to, that you need to do, except that I like to talk to people. That was my thing. But um, just a little plug here real quick for coaching, if I can throw that in really fast, Darwin, if you don't care. It was a mind, total mindset changer, confidence. It was a confidence builder. I got the confidence to do, I mean, I had been given all the tools and Darwin is a great coach and he had been teaching me and working with me. And then I started one-on-one -on -one coaching with Alex and he really put my feet to the fire and held me accountable and something clicked in my brain. And my why has changed over these six years. Um, and, and 
to be able to realize accomplishments feels so good, especially when you're really struggling, because some of us are really struggling. I'm down in, in production. I know many of us are, and, and maybe we're newer, and we don't have the, the realm, our sphere we don't think is big enough. All I can say is talk to people and gain the confidence and, and why. What is your why to give you that? Um, let me just share with you my why. So this is my dream board. Is my video on? It, it was off. My camera keeps coming off. So this is my dream board. It's a piece of paper courtesy of Mike Wagner. He has a little thing here. This can travel with me. It goes in my bag. It's in my visor. I gave my husband a copy last night because we did this yesterday. Did you see that guy right there? That is my why. So, well, there's two. Okay. So this picture was taken at an awards banquet, I think last year. Uh, I had a great year last year. Uh, it was fabulous. Um, and I want that to happen again. But also, and more importantly, I almost lost that guy a year and a half ago. He almost didn't survive, major heart attack, should not have lived, did, had another very close health scare two months ago. So my why has changed in that my number one, we're on my personal side here, spend time with family. How can I spend time with family and do my job? That's that balance you guys are talking about, right? That balance that we have to find. Um, and I'm working with Alex on how to get that balance, how to work and hit it hard so that I can have the time. I've been able, I've been lucky enough because of last year to be able to take some trips and do some things with this guy this year because we are now officially empty nesters. So um, my why has changed from six years ago to today, but it's also been such a growing opportunity utilizing the tools that we have right here with this company. So if, if my, my thing is, if you are unhappy with where you are at now, you have the power to change it, like right now. Utilize the tools that the company offers and talk to people. Just have a conversation with people. And that is um, going to get you, help you meet your why to get you what it is that you really want, which my money, the money that I make gets me so I can spend time with family. And that right now is the most important thing. I love it. Uh, you guys are, you, you're being so much better than what I anticipated. How are we doing on time, too? All right, 12.34. Let me give, you know, uh, some basic tips because um, I mentioned I'm not um, a big dream board person. I know it works, but I got to tell you, there's so many things that have happened in my life. I could I could go over uh, back to being in high school when I'm thinking about Gee, I'd, I'd love to be a teacher. Um, life circumstances happen, and uh, that that did not occur. But is I I could just see it so much that as I was back in my days with McDonald's and doing training classes, then into Century Twenty One and doing training classes, I would always go ask the instructor, "What does it take to get to do what you're doing?" And the odd part was that. Because I asked that question, because I, I could tell you, by the way, I had dreams. Literally, I could see it okay. where I was doing it. And lo and behold, many of you would, would know a lady named of Wanda Flynn from Century 21. Um, she called me up and said, you need to get me a resume today. You're the second person who knows that I've taken a position and I will be leaving, and I need to deliver that to Bill McCullen. Mm -hmm. So many of you know Bill, and uh, Bill hired me in to become a trainer for Century 21. Um, more recently, my dreams that uh, I, a big one, uh, Jess, you mentioned uh, debt-free and being able to pay for college and being debt-free for me. It was just being debt free. Now, to me, I'm okay with one car payment and a house payment. And that, that house payment's only got about 10 years to go. And it'll be done. Um, 
but if you knew where we were, we never filed bankruptcy, we never defaulted on a loan. Everybody's been paid the full amount of what they were supposed to be paid. Um, we're debt free. We've uh, we've done our trip to Ireland. We we have our camper, um, and those were things that did and were placed on the dream board. And there's things that are still coming along, but again, start with the end in mind and, and start with the dream. You, you got to share what uh, I, I got to go back to Peggy for a moment here because this was actually business planning, a business plan yeah. dream. Share, share how that came about to, because we are where we are yeah, sat down and, and what you dreamed up. Yeah. So in November of 2020, I had been with Coldwell Banker and, and Darwin's office in Oxford since April. So COVID hit, right? Mm -hmm. And I come back, I come from a very strong business visionary background. So she's being modest. She started a couple of businesses, built them and sold them. And um, and so he comes to me and he goes, you know, I need your goals. And I'm thinking, all right. And I thought about it for a day or two. And then I thought, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this the way I see it should be done. So I use something called a vision traction organizer. It's very important to stay focused. And it's very important every quarter to take a look at where you are personally, professionally, and spiritually. So in that VTO, I sat down and I said, Darwin, this is really what I'm on. And that was to create a commercial division. Did I know at the time when Chris Hendricks got uh, Manistee, he got, lo and behold, a commercial franchise with that acquisition? Not an ounce did I know that, not an ounce. But I was able to just work on things, do things my own way, dream a little bit. And I got to tell you, it's awesome to work with so many of you and give opportunities to you that would have never happened to before. It, and it was, it's huge. It was so interesting because when we when she sat down, and, and look, I'm going, it's Peg, what do I really need to do? But I want her to think, and she deserves the same kind of attention everybody gets. So it's like, I, I did. I kind of kept it simple. Hey, just wondering business plan. I know what you do. You probably do more than I'd ever think about. And she did. Um, and then it was, as we were talking, I'm going, oh my gosh, I think we actually had that. So when you brought it to me, I, I said, you know, <laughs> what would be really cool is what if we were able to bring that commercial franchise, coal banker for commercial franchise, to Detroit. I mean, why shouldn't it be here? Why shouldn't? Matter, matter of fact, why shouldn't it be right here with us, Peg? You and I, this is something that we could do right here in the Oxford Orient office. And um, lo and behold, it moved. How long ago? Uh, when we moved to the Lake Orion office, uh, Chris moved it down. So we are officially Coldwell Banker Commercial Premier. You'll see it on the doors, which is cool. So it, it literally, it was just, it started with this time of year, we got to do a business plan. And it, I mean, I give her credit. All I did was to take what she had already dreamt up and we expanded upon that to where it, it became a company dream, a company goal. And, and it's just interesting because it was like, oh my gosh, it happened. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in a lot of communication, communication is an art, right? And you learn a lot about people, the way they communicate. So if you're in a meeting with somebody and they got to flip the page and draw pictures and, and talk at the same time, they're a huge visionary. So I have to share that last Tuesday, I sat with Chris with a quarterly update and he flips the page over. And he starts drawing all these pictures. So little by little, it's pretty cool to see visions integrate. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, Jess, let me go back to you because you're in a manager's position, uh, co-manager there with James in Belleville. Um, 
what what should uh, or what are you guys going to be doing? Because I think you guys do a great job of doing the green boards. What are you guys setting up for there? Yep, so today's definitely the kickoff to this phase of our year where we're going to be focused in on business planning for 2023. This is the first step. And um, thank you, by the way, people are texting me thanking me for sharing my story. And thank you. I appreciate that. Um, my point, though, is like, we all have a story. And we can keep this kind of surface and just focus on, yeah, I want to have a good life. But if you really do reflect and dig deep, we've all got somewhere in there, all the motivation that we really need to push us when we need to be pushed to, to accomplish our goals. And if we use that to set realistic, very specific goals, that's very powerful. That's the power of why that we're talking about. So our first step is identifying the power of why. We're going to get together as a group, work on our dream boards, set those specific goals, and then do our business planning from there. I love it. I love it. Then it becomes, okay, now we've we've got our why, we've got our motivation, we've got our goals. What steps are we going to take to accomplish those goals? Awesome. Can I just say one more thing? Please. I think it's really cool when you think about thoughts are things and um, adults with glue sticks adults with glue sticks and magazines and watching a thought process that happens around that table yeah you know i i'd like this bathroom or i'd like this so it's really kind of cool to see that happen and go through it and and touch it and feel those thoughts and those ideas and those things coming to life absolutely Lori. um your process you came up with a really I'm going to say she has pretty. She has tagged everything. I mean, tags, pins. There's glitter. Glitter. Yeah. Hearts. Hearts. Um, yeah. But I don't rework this every year. I, I I add things to it and I'll take things off. I think my big motivator is that list, the one through 100 items. And I'll make a new one like New Year's Day every year. Mm -hmm. But I, I keep all of them from every year. And so I'll go back five years and I'll say, I can finally check that one off because I never get Isn't through. it amazing? You can go back yes. and you just go, oh my gosh, I accomplished it. I didn't even think about right. that I had it on a list. Right. I never get through all hundred goals in one year ever, mm -hmm. but it may be five years later. I will. Absolutely. Uh, Stephanie, what would you share? I would like to, um, at least for me, I would like to share the importance of having and identifying your why and knowing what it is and having it written down somewhere because real estate isn't always easy and we sometimes run into problems and it is very easy to just not want to deal with it, not want to put up with it. Maybe you entertain the idea of leaving. I don't know. But when you can refocus on and you, you kind of look at what your why is it makes it so much easier to push through or to put up with all that sacrifice that you know i'm missing out on my kids something because i've got showings and we're in a competitive market and i've got to get that offer in or that my clients don't have a chance so it's it's important to learn how to structure our time but it's also we have to sacrifice a lot often um and that why becomes even more important because you want to, you've got to have that goal in your vision so that you can see and it helps you push through those hard times and work through it so that you can accomplish that goal. And you don't just give up and go, you know what, I'm done. Or, you know, it 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 makes it worth it. It helps you realize why it's what is worth it and why it's worth it. So anyway, I think it's really important because it helps during those tough times. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I'm showing 1246. Uh, let me go ahead and open up the microphone. That sounds like we're really doing something. What I'm saying is, is guys, what I'd love for you to be able to do, um, you, you've got a panel here that uh, has shared some great stories, and I really do appreciate it and, and the shares that you've got. I hope that it, it is impacting those that are out there. 
But if you've got a question, just take yourself off mute and uh, you can direct it to anyone or someone in particular. But what questions are there out there uh, that we can answer about the power of why green sheets mm -hmm. and green boards, the process that we're going to be going through in the next month or so? I love the sign. Well, I've, it's I've pretty got, quiet. It's pretty quiet. I have a quick question. Did any of you? Go ahead and ask. And we'll, we'll repeat it. If you can't tell, Bill, Bill's in the same big room with us here. <laughs> He's thinking. Did any of you think that the process? So did any of us think that the process of the dream sheets, the dream boards were a stupid idea? And I know why he's asking that. I think it's a great question. Did we think it was a bad idea before we did it? I did. I did so not. Lori thought, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, thought it was really corny. Right, Steph, how about you? Yeah, I'm with Jessica. I'm like, what's the point? It was like, what's the point? I just thought it was a waste There's of time. So that's three, I'll, I'll add mine in. I'm way back when I'm going, really? <laughs> There's a great book called The Dream Manager. Yes. It's a great book. It's a good read. It's a, you know, self-help kind of something, but you know, you got to do things to help you believe. It's interesting uh, that Chris, what actually started in us de-emphasizing goals and more emphasis toward dreams started because Chris received the dream manager who passed it along to every manager who then it's the reason that we do what we do yep. every year at this time. Yep because it brings up the why, the dreams that are in there. So the dream manager is the book. Do you remember the- book. I don't remember the author. I do not remember the author either, but the dream manager and it's, um, what's the, the word that it's written in as a, uh, uh, oh, doggone, a parable? Kind of, I mean, yes. Yeah, yes. Jesus story. always spoke in parables, yep. but it's told as a story, yep. but it comes across as factual. Yes. So it's a very, very interesting book to be able to read, but uh, I, I do like that. Um, so I, I think Bill, in asking that question, is telling you all if you've been in this mindset that what a silly thing to do, change the mindset because it really is bringing in the dream and bringing the senses into it. So the more that, uh, Jess, you showing that photo that you look at because it's like, man, I get to go there mm -hmm. in July. I, I mean, just to remind you that there's a strong motivator to be able to see that. That's bringing in not just the visual sense, but all of the senses that come along with it. So that's a great question. Who else has got a question for us? Then? If nobody speaks up, I'm, I'm gonna go to the, uh, we'll go final thoughts, guys. Uh, while, you, while you do that, can I jump in, Darwin? Yeah, and just well, share something uh, that's been helpful, something that's been really helpful with me. So first of all, just get get comfortable talking to people. I don't often talk real estate with people. I just talk to people and then real estate comes up. So that is how I do it. And, and it takes you a while. If you're new, it'll take you maybe a minute to get comfortable with that, but talk to people. Now, now that being said, don't be afraid to share with other people what your dreams are. People outside of right here, although I want to share with Darwin what my dreams are because he might help hold me accountable for that. But talk to your friends or whatever. If you're talking real estate with someone, if, if you're having a conversation and, and real estate comes up and you're like, yeah, you know, I've got great goals for next year. If, if you can help me realize my goals and people will want to help you. They're going to help you. So, but you have to put it out there. So I think that's part of manifesting it a little bit. I have not read that book, but in order to make it happen, let people know what your goals are 
and then maybe they might throw something your way that really helps you out. So don't be afraid to talk to other people about what your goals are and what your dreams are, and they can help you make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, you know, John Goyne says that, yeah, when you, when you transfer it to paper and you can see it, it really goes beyond what the mind can create on its own, but yes. will enhance what the mind is seeing. Um, and then uh, John Lafferty asked, do, do you have two or three boards, one for home office and car? Anybody do more than one? I think Jeff is that, or no, Seth, that's probably why you created that smaller one, isn't it? There, I'm off mute. So yeah, because it's it's just I can easily pull it out. It stays in my work bag. It's um, you know, my my business is only three things. My level of product to increase personal brand awareness, eight million in sales next year, and to be a fantastic mentor. Those are my three career things. My personal is a lot longer, and it travels. It just goes. And I gave a copy. My uh, now a, a copy sits on my husband's desk. He works at home. But I'm giving it to other people. Um, I gave it to Don Connors, like other people, so that they can see what I want to do and maybe they can help me do it. But it's a good reminder, always. It's always with me. This is it. It doesn't sit on the wall back here. It, it travels with me because I go sleep. I like it. I like it. Well, hey, let's go to uh, final thoughts then. Um, anybody want to start with the final thoughts? I guess I will. As, as you start doing your dream board, pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your emotions, how you feel, why it's important. Connect with yourself. I was going to say something along those same lines, Peggy. Just take time to reflect and really dig deep, and the motivation you need is there, but give yourself the opportunity to find it. Absolutely. Lori? I, I think I, I would recommend keeping your goals realistic and attainable, too. Like, you know, don't set a goal of selling $30 million next year when you're probably not going to make something that's attainable. Um, talk with others, help, get help from others. Uh, because I can think of a number of individuals who through their conversation, one, one of them being I, I, Christina Stoppel. She said to me, why are you here? And I was managing an office in Whitehall, Michigan. And she said to me, why are you here? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. She said, why are you here? I said, okay, Smarty, you apparently know what I'm doing or why I'm, I said, help me out. She said, would you just listen to yourself? You're not doing what you want to do or what you should be doing. And because, it, and it was literally that quick, I realized I was still wanting to be a teacher. Everything that I had been sharing with her in conversation was about me helping other people and where they rose to levels of success. And I played this little small role in that success that they had. And it was the next day that I stopped managing and I had went back enrolled at the uh, local com uh, community college to begin taking courses to pursue what I wanted to do which was becoming a teacher and again oddly enough uh, as I put it God knew in my heart what he wanted me to do I just had to have somebody help me recognize it <laughs> because it was soon after that that I received that call from Wanda Flynn and the offer from Bill McCullen, which has led me to doing what I'm doing today. Listen to others' dreams. Look at the things that you may not even be consciously thinking about, which will lead you where you really want to go. You may not know that you want it as bad as you want it. So guys, anything else that you would share? We're good. Thank you then, Jessica, 
you were awesome. I love your share. I you participated and gave me so much more than what I was hoping for. And I know uh, Stephanie, thank you. Uh, Lori, Peggy, again, it was awesome. Uh, I hope that we've impacted you guys and you can see the value of what your managers are going to be bringing up for you, what mentors will be doing for those mentees. Yeah, it may seem like a silly process, but in the end, it can be life-changing because it's what's going to work between here. So everybody, thank you for being a part. Have a great one. And thank you again to our panelists. Uh, you can throw that all out to them. Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you next month.